Greetings and praise the Lord. Welcome to our daily devotion. We welcome you to our second episode of Activating Grace. I am sure you were able to listen to our first episode on surrender to God. And um, we are going to read uh, James chapter 4, verses 6 to 7 again, like yesterday, because um, our second episode is on Resist the Devil. We are actually have dealing with the principles for appropriating grace uh, this week. And uh, this is going to be our second uh, principle of appropriating grace, that is resist the devil. And uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you for giving us this wonderful moment to share your word and even to hear it and even to act on your word. We pray that each and every listener is going to experience the presence of God than never before. And those who have not even given their lives to Jesus, my Lord, my Father, I'm praying that they are going to give their life to you so that they are able to do that to have the principles of appropriating grace and because they cannot have it without receiving the grace my lord i'm praying that anyone that is in the valley of decision of whether to give their life to you or not my father i'm praying that you help them elevate them and raise them from that level from that valley so that they can give their life to you I thank you and I give you praise this this time, wherever or whatever time each and every person is listening from and even time they're listening to this message. I'm praying for each one of them that they will be blessed in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Invite your friends. Let them know that we are learning on how to appropriate grace and that the principles are coming forth in a powerful way I am getting blessed as I share and even as I seek the face of God as to what I need to share each and every moment and know that I'm praying for you. I prayed for you even before I started ministering and that is why you need to share with each and every person because each and every one that will listen to this message is surely going to be blessed because I've prayed for them. Now in Ephesians, uh, before we get to Ephesians chapter 6, let's look at the verse so we read verses we read yesterday and that is james chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 and he gives grace generously as the scripture says god opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble so humble that is submit yourselves before god resist the devil and he will flee from you the word the word is resist the devil and he will flee from you and one of the ways you're going to resist him, you submit to God. Because when you submit to God, there is no way the devil will try to come close to you because you are under somebody who is really concerned about your life and is taking care of you. Because when we are talking about, um, about submitting, uh, submitting, we are talking about placing one, oneself under, under. That is the proud person who find this to be the ultimate challenge. Those unwilling to submit to God's control will never be open to the grace that God has promised. So you, for you to be able to receive the grace that God has promised, then you have to submit yourself unto the Lord. Then now let's have a look at, uh, at um, Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Finally, imagine I'm beginning and I'm um, starting with finally. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Now, first, bit, uh, you, you know, you, you need to do what? You have to be strong in the Lord, not in yourself, not in what you have, not in who you are, but in the Lord and in the strength of his might don't have don't don't think of don't don't think that you can make it because of your own strength because you're learned because you're this and that you're anointed no you submit yourself unto the lord and you are told you be strong in the lord and then you also and uh, is strong in in the lord and in the might in the strength of his might 
because he's mighty he's mighty god he's able to do anything so you yourself your work is to submit unto him and allow him to do the business of taking you through the journeys of the journeys and experiencing that which he has for you because he has great and wonderful things he wants to take you through encounters and encounters experiences you've never experienced just allow him to take it just you be strong in the lord and in the strength of his might then in first peter chapter 5 verses 5 to 5 uh, to 11 also from the english standard version likewise mm -hmm, you who are younger be subject to the elders clothe yourselves all of you with humility toward one another for god opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. You will be exalted at that proper time, but you know what? For you to be exalted, there has to be that season of humility. Humble before God. Humble before God. In me. You're going to humble yourself in many ways. In you allowing that the, the Lord to take over, to be in charge. Allowing the Lord to do the mighty things he's always wanted to do in your life. He's always wanted to take you from one level to the other. And um, because you know what, there are many things that you're going through, but the Lord is going to take care of you. you as you humble yourself, one of the things you're also going to do, you're going to cast all your anxieties on him. That is verse 7. Cast all your anxieties on him. You're not being told to cast a few of your anxieties. All your anxieties. What is that that is bothering you? What is troubling you? What is that is that is making your heart heavy? That what is breaking your heart? Cut those anxieties, the Lord is asking you, cast all of them unto him because he cares for you. The Lord doesn't want to watch you suffering. He wants you to cast all those sufferings unto him. All that is causing the, the suffering, he wants you to cast it all unto him. And you know what he's telling you in verse 8? Be sober-minded. Be watchful. You, you, when you're being told you be sober-minded, the only way you can be sober in your mind is you submit unto the Lord. You have the mind of Christ. That is the one that is sober. There is no mind that can be sober without Christ. It doesn't matter. Yes, we talk of people being sober because they are not drunk or maybe they don't have the influence of maybe alcohol or drug. But I am here to let you know, even if you are not drinking alcohol or taking drugs or you are not involved in other activities that you know they are, they are not acceptable, I am here to let you know you will never be sober without Christ. It's only that mind that has Christ, only that heart that has Christ, that will be able to produce a mind that is sober. Then be watchful. When you're talking about being watchful, it is you be prayerful. You be prayerful. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, we're going to read a verse that is telling us to pray because it's very, very important to be watchful. Not all, just a few times or only when, when you've been called to pray by other people but even or, or even maybe when you go to church or probably you are in a fellowship or in a meeting that's when you only remember to pray this one be watchful that is all the time you're supposed to be in prayer not only when you're going for the night watch uh, or the night watch that is not the only time you should be watchful you should be watchful all the time because the lord the enemy of our souls that is let's let's continue reading verse 8 your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a rolling lion, seeking someone to devour. So if you are not hidden in prayer, if you are not hidden in Christ, the enemy is not resting. He is actually trying to figure out who is that person that is not hidden, is not locked in somewhere, is not having a hedge around them. Who is that person that is wandering about here doing their own business without the Lord? Let me tell you, the enemy is out there. He's prowling around like a roaring lion. You know, the roaring lion, mm -hmm, sometimes when it is rolling, it's not actually dangerous. But let me tell you, when it is trying to hunt you, when it is trying to get near you, that is when, when it is actually it wants to get near you even when you are not aware. 
that when you are wandering around there alone that is when the enemy wants to get hold of you i am here to let you know that you know what the lord is able to get you out of all these mess he is able to get to to get you out of this and even protect you when you or you 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 are unaware that the enemy is prowling around you hide yourself be hidden don't just let yourself be found there because you know what the, the um uh, you know the enemy the enemy wants us to suffer and he wants us to be alone that's the time he really wants he really wants to get hold of us but because he knows when you are in a when you are in a group and and not just in a group in a group where you are in a fellowship because our our groups our our christian groups they're supposed to be for fellowship they're not supposed to be for any other business they are for fellowship with one another to build one another if you are in a group and it's a christian group and it is not building you it is not adding value into your life that is spiritually then you don't need to be in that group if that group is for just other business is not putting you to another level on another gear to move on and challenge you to move into another level in the lord then you need to get out of that group because we our business is supposed to be fellowship in one another build one another encourage one another raise one another that is where we belong then he says in verse 9 resist him that is the devil firm in your faith you the only way you're going to resist him you have to be firm in your faith one way that is one way not the only way one way of resisting him you be firm in your faith knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world so you don't look at the suffering and think that you have been neglected or the lord has neglected you but you have to know that all of us we are going through some suffering is only that we don't allow the suffering to overtake us or even to build the, themselves on top of us we allow ourselves that the only one that is on top is the lord the only one we are submitting to is the lord and we allow the lord to take charge to be in control because he's going to be in the business of taking us from one level to another we have we, we are going to allow the lord to do all that he has wanted to do in our lives and then um he tells us that is um continues to tell us in verse verse 10 and after you have suffered a little while the god of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. So you know what? It's just for a, for a season. That suffering is not, if you're in Christ, that suffering is not there forever. And I keep on telling people, you that, that don't even want to go to, to church, you don't want to be in the presence of God, you don't want to go and fellowship with other brethren let me tell you when what you're trying to do you are making suffering permanent in your life you need to allow the lord to, you need to have time to be in the presence of the lord submit unto the lord take all those care, care all those cares unto the lord cast them unto the lord have a moment where you can leave all that before the lord because if you never had an opportunity to be in the presence of god i'm here to let you know suffering will be your will be your best friend suffering is going to be there forever in your life but if but for those ones who are believers those ones who are seeking the lord those ones who are watchful i am here to encourage you again and again that the lord is not going to allow you to continue living in that suffering it is for a little while and you know what the god of all grace the god with multiplied grace the more god of overflowing grace who has called you to his eternal glory in christ will himself restore restore confirm strengthen and establish you to him be the dominion forever and ever second chronicles 7 14 then if you my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways i will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land so that's why you need to be watchful you you that are called by the name of the lord 
humble yourself let's allow the lord to be the one in charge he's asking you to cast your cares unto him humble yourself humbly go before him ask him to heal you ask him you how you have tell him how you are feeling you know it's not that he doesn't know he knows but what he wants you to do is you cast those those cares unto him all those sufferings you're going through let him know tell him tell him you're suffering and you need to be rescued you need to be delivered you need to get out of that and the lord is going to come quickly and deliver you that doesn't mean that he has never known he knows what you're going through but he needs you to come to him he needs you to turn around and come to him resist the enemy and then come unto the lord humble yourself before him and he will take you through to another season in another level and he's going to take care of us and not only take care of us he's going to take care of our or of our or even our land he's even going to he's even going to to help us because you know we have to get out of our weak turn from our wicked ways and even you know what he will forgive us of our sins because if that suffering has been caused by sin then you have to turn away from that sin don't continue dwelling in that sin get out of it quickly and come unto the lord and he's gonna rescue you he's gonna take care of you and he's gonna take care of other businesses in your life and even your family and your land that is what the Lord is about to do. Your nation is going to be to be to be taken care of because you've turned your heart unto the Lord. And the Lord is going to be because once you have given your life to Jesus, and if you are a backslider, you've come back into the kingdom. Let me tell you, that is a a, a, a plus in the kingdom of God and a blessing even to your nation. God bless you for now. This is Bishop Dr. Grace Karuki. Of Amazing Grace International Ministries and Abundant Glory International Ministries, mother to the amazing champions and a mother to the CMCs, that is the church ministers' children around the globe. And um, I'm blessed to be that way. It's a blessing, I'm telling you. I enjoy. And uh, I invite you to partner with us through our website at www.agracem.org. And also uh, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, Insta and Instagram at Bishop Dr. Grace Karuki. God bless you for now. Shalom. Shalom.